It is actually officially mentioned in like the strategy guides. They just go back and forth between calling it a bonus and a token, but token is just more natural. So it seems like I see in comments a lot that people are confused when they see this car and they're like, oh, you put a new car in the game. This car has always been in this base game. I guess a lot of people just didn't unlock it. Uh, so pretty proud of this church here. The stained glass looks a lot better in HD. So the story behind the uh, the damage flash in this game is an interesting one. Basically, the developers uh, were kind of in argument about whether they should leave it in or you know modify it or whatever. And they actually did remove it for the driving levels after you get the golden armor upgrade. So you don't have any damage flash in the base game when you have the golden armor upgrade and you know it's just better playing better um, but they left it in for everywhere else and man it was pretty pretty nasty very glad it's gone so no cheat hidden cheat in this level Whoa. So this is just a nice little shortcut. Go this way instead of where the map tells you to go. It's a lot quicker. So, interesting thing about this level, there's actually two really big potential time savers for speedrunning. Um, the first, at the very beginning of the level, if you were to somehow find a way to bounce up over one of the uh, fences, if you turn directly around and go the opposite direction when you start, um, if you were able to bounce over that fence, you drive up this path to an unloaded spot and then it like teleports you. Almost forgot to boost. It teleports you like way like up to the subway um, or the train station which would save like over a minute or something and then there's also a way to get to the ending area uh, this area um, early uh, but if you get there early then uh, you get mission failed when you do the boost jump um, over the gap because you didn't complete all of the uh, objectives and that's an interesting thing about this game as linear as it is like casually you really can only play it you know one way um, but even if you do find like sequence breaks, the game is like, hey, you forgot objective two, <laughs> you know, it, it really didn't have to be programmed that way at all, but that's probably just how they started coding it. A couple of interesting explodable objects in this level that a lot of people don't know about. I'll show you here in a sec. So the first one is this, uh, the statue over here to the left. <laughs> yeah, you can blow it to pieces. The tank is also high res now. Wow, how are you not dead? I try every time, but this is not possible to, uh, <laughs> that was a terrible shot, but it's impossible to hit that helicopter. I don't think it has any tangibility during the cutscene. So here's another 
explodable object that a lot of people don't know about, these pillars here. So you can actually blow up each one of these and they'll fall to pieces. Also this uh, tanker here is completely linked with these vans. Doesn't matter where the vans are, if you blow that thing up, these tanks are going to blow up, <laughs> even though they're like 30 feet away. <laughs> Gotta terrorize the bellhops. But they really don't Q. They really don't. Or R, <laughs> as he's called. Overkill. Am I out of ammo? I am. Ooh, I overused it. It's okay, because there will be a pickup right before the train, so you don't get soft locked. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do my trick here because I'm getting this really late. <laughs> this ammo. Ah! <laughs> not quite. But uh, yeah, you can shoot the uh, explosive tank before the cutscene if you're fast enough. Next is fire and water. Definitely a tough level. 007. The data chip indicates an oil drill. So you can get a secret right here, just the one that was in the original game. If you jump on top of these barrels and then access that, you'll get some armor and a sniper rifle. It's pretty cool. But I'll do it the old natural way, because I'm a tough guy. So you probably saw in the changelog that um, there are weapon buffs to certain weapons. But those only apply to the multiplayer weapons. Nothing in single player has been changed except for the fact that um, uh, accuracy is just all around better. And accuracy doesn't get worse as you hold down the fire button. I've always been bad at multitasking while playing a game, like doing commentary and stuff, so if it looks like I'm playing like a buffoon, that's why. And there's also no secret cheat in this mission. 
believe we'll have to wait for the next mission. Oh, uh, so an interesting thing. A couple interesting things I'll show you in this area. Uh, first of all, actually, I guess there's a few. Wow, this this room's like a smorgasbord of, of secrets. So first secret, <laughs> there's a uh, defender pistol up here that you can jump to. That I I missed the jump, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's sitting right up there, and you can go and get a defender, which is pretty underwhelming because it's not a great gun, especially at this stage in the uh, in the campaign. <laughs> I'd much rather have that. <laughs> Alright, so another interesting thing is um, when this cutscene is rolling, if you have the attention of these guys, they can actually like shoot through this glass and hit you. Let's see if I can get their attention. Guys? Okay. Maybe I didn't do that right. Oh, there's no cutscene because it's agent. But if you play on operative, if this cutscene's running, they can like snipe you through this because it becomes intangible during the cutscene, which is interesting. And the third thing in this room, it's worth mentioning, is that the texture for this oil pump jack right here, this um, ooh, this thing with the rivets, so that's the same texture as the uh, beta door you can find in my Agent Under Fire Top 10 Secrets video. It shares the exact same texture as that door. Because uh, I tried to add a password onto the secret door, and it showed up here as well. <laughs> That's how I found out. Um, I also decided that I didn't want to add any hidden passwords out of bounds or require the player to do anything advanced to get them. Just wanted you to be, you know, curious and explore. out. Boom. Whoa, how did that not... Oh, shoot. I think he shot the grenade. That can happen in this game. Um, AI can shoot grenades, rockets, right out of the air. It works in multiplayer, too. Once you know about it, it kind of takes the uh, takes the thunder out of some of the more powerful explosive weapons. Uh, we should be fine here. I feel like there's something I should be mentioning here. Mm. Um, one thing that a lot of people don't know is that the elevator that comes down here, it's on a timer. Uh, so it doesn't matter how fast you kill these guys or anything. As soon as you like touch this part of the rope, in fact, if you get up here without using that, you can just jump right here and also activate the sequence. And these guys will come down. <clears throat> oh, you can also you can also press the button from over here and send this up and completely screw yourself. So I'll give that a try if you want. <clears throat> Time for Forbidden Depths and our next hidden cheat code. It's one of the easier ones to find, I think. It's called Futuristic, Futuristic Rides Controls. So if you put two and two together, this is a pretty futuristic ride. And if you look all the way down right there at that little screen, 
you will find your password for the cheat that I gotta remember I think it unlocks hmm I gotta think about this one I'll tell you in a sec <laughs> So, you probably know about this if you've watched my Secrets video. You can destroy these monitors and spawn a CH-6 rocket launcher, which for years I didn't know you could get in this mission. Yeah, sorry, I, j I just cannot remember what that cheat is. <laughs> it might come to me by process of elimination, though. You can actually leave that guy alive, and uh, when you get to the next four stop, he'll bump you repeatedly. It saves like a second in a speedrun. Also, uh, there's some little subtle texture improvements to this mission. For example, if I pause right here, if you look at the bottom left at those blue lights that line the track, see they look much better now. Same with the paint. These messages are fun to read. Things like uh, fishing prohibited and evil, um, something evil henchman seminar this Saturday or something. Obviously, I can't point out all the textures that have been improved. There's just an enormous amount. Things like explosion, explosion effects, all of it's been improved slightly. Oh, I will show you something funny at this uh, at this spot. <laughs> so you see those guys running off to the right. Watch this. This door also opens after a set amount of time. But if we wait around and and don't kill this guy yet, as long as he doesn't do too much damage, we'll be okay. But If you wait long enough, you'll see something funny right here. Good thing is accuracy is terrible. It's taking longer than I remember. You can see we're inching forward. <laughs> there he is. So there's a guy who's like frozen in running animation <laughs> right here behind this door. Okay, I gotta kill him before I die. There's also one of those blue Malprave monitors way in the corner over there. You would think that would be the one you have to shoot to get the CH6. Why won't you die? <laughs> yep, 
The only way to make this section interesting is if you use the shotgun. <laughs> like hard mode so you can make block flip into the air all glitchy like here if you shoot him just right it's pretty rare but yeah if you get lucky he'll flip into the air you don't have to deal with these mines I like this part. <laughs> so, supposedly it's really hard to get the uh the bond move or something here at this part on the PS2 version. I think it's programmed kind of wonky. Maybe you can tell me in the comments your experience with that glitch. This uh, platform thing has also been upscaled. So using the CH6 in this uh, fight speeds things up considerably on, when you have to shoot those targets on the top. So the secret to getting him there in just two little shots is uh, hitting him on like the high chest area or higher. You hit him once, he'll like become invincible during his staggering animation and then just hit him one more time. Otherwise, you could be circling for a little while, trying to take him down. So yeah, it's not a health thing, it's a, um, it's a shot location thing. Three shots, three hits, right? Let's do it. So yeah, these rockets move a lot faster than the uh, fly-by-wire ones. MLG, yeah. <clears throat> well, our main villain is dead. And now we're going into Poseidon, which there is a secret cheat in this mission. Oh, by the way, um, if you didn't already notice, the uh, token pickup sound is different. It's just a quick dent instead of whatever it was before. Da -da -da -da. Like it just went on for like four seconds. It's kind of ridiculous for a, a little pickup. So obviously you could get the um, Idle Serpent's Grip uh, password in this level as well, since you also have the Viper here. <clears throat> you can just walk past everything in this part. <laughs> Poseidon's kind of a weird level to me. You probably also noticed that there's no bullet tracers at all from, like, gunshots. That's um, an option you have in AUF Reloaded. You can have either improved tracers or no tracers at all. And I think I just uh, prefer having no tracers. A bit more realistic. Because in real life, you know, bullet tracers are, like, a ammo-specific thing. And you typically use them in, like, warfare to track your shots over distance. But, you know, whatever floats your boat. I'll try to show you a cool secret here if I can remember exactly what to do. Um, 
So you're able to open this back up and go back upstairs at any point, really. Um, but as you hit these, and you can see the smoke building up in these uh, tubes, it's actually rising into the above area. So really, like, small, interesting detail. You can, like, do that and then go back upstairs. Oh, gosh, I hope I've never done it with the... Uh, Earthquake going on. Okay, we're okay. But uh, yeah, you come back up here and there's smoke in these tanks. This is so super obscure and unnecessary of a detail, but it exists. Because, like, why are you going to come back up here? In fact, when you um, do that last signal right here, um, a few moments later, see the button actually breaks and you can no longer open the elevator. So they even prevent you from going back up, and yet the detail still exists up there. So yeah, normally this door would be shut and this would start sparking and you cannot get in the elevator. But if you leave the elevator open and go in, you can check out the smoke. So yeah, collect the uh, card here and you can start the next mission outside the jail cell. It's a pretty neat little secret. I almost forgot the uh, cheat code secret. So the cheat is called Fresh Batch of Clones. Alright, alright. Go away. Oh, shoot. They do a lot of damage on Agent. Alright, so the secret's called Fresh Batch of Clones, which would be these guys. And if you have, like, a scoped weapon, it helps, uh, which I don't, but you can... There's a UGW and others around here to pick up. Um... And if you look closely on the backs of these clones, you'll see your password for invincibility. Let's go get some... Oh, I took the armor out of there, that's right. Yikes. So the UGW in single player is actually much better than it is in multiplayer. Not that it's any slouch in uh, multiplayer, but in single player it just fires so quickly. At 30 damage per bullet. It's really strong. Look at that. So if you didn't pick up the verification card, um, when you access the subcomputer, you get like gassed and you both pass out and you wake up in a jail cell. I seem to recall you being killed in Hong Kong, Ms. Nightshade. James, that was a clone. So, really funny thing about the story in this game, you know, Zoe's presumed dead after the second mission because she gets like blown up. And you were supposed to be her protector, you know, and uh... Later in level 6, Night of the Jackal, Q shows you that hologram in the shower. And if you zoom in on the face, it is Zoe. It's Zoe Nightshade, the, the dead girl that you failed to protect. And Q's like, here's a naked hologram to mock you. It's just so weird and inappropriate of, of R to do. But it's okay, because she's alive. <laughs> All right, Mediterranean Crisis. This mission has two hidden cheat codes. And one is right here at the start. 
outside. And you can also access this area if you started in a gel cell. You just have to find your way over here. Um, look at that water, though. My goodness. What an improvement. Okay, so <laughs> if you come over here, uh, the secret, by the way, is called a float on a rolling sea. And if you come over here, little obscure detail in this game, there's actually a little boat that you and Zoe came in on. And you can see it's bobbing up and down on the water. And you'll find your password here. And the cheat is called Too Many Martinis. And I'll let you find out what that means. Oh, interesting secret <laughs> about this spot. Um, there's actually a couple guards in this area that are completely deaf. You can see this guy just does not care that bullets are flying around. He cannot hear you. He can see you, but he cannot hear you. You can jump around. Oh, there he is. <laughs> this is the only uh, area of the game, I think, where the guards aren't programmed correctly in that way. <laughs> so this shotgun outside the gel cell actually has a lot more ammunition than the one you get um, uh, outside. You only get like eight rounds or something in the other. Oh, to going the wrong way. So things like these signs are also upscaled. This gun just deletes people. <laughs> It's so absurd. She's kidnapped the G8 leaders and intends to substitute them with clone replicants. That's not your only problem. What do I do? Let's go the sneaky route. Now that we've let everyone know we're here, let's let's take the stealth route. This has got to be one of the best shotguns in FPS history. <laughs> Look at that. He's supposed to be like a mini boss. <laughs> oh, I didn't get the code. I can't turn them into toast. Look at that! It's a long-range weapon! <laughs> this thing is so stupid. But I love it. <laughs> Pop! 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 <laughs> nice job, dude. Oh, I'll show you a cool secret in this spot. So, normally, when you go through this door, there's a lot of enemies. A helicopter shows up and starts badgering you. But there's actually a way to skip all of that. If you um, jump onto this railing... Oh, whoops. That's why I made a save state. So you jump onto this railing. Okay. And now you kind of inch your way over here. If you jump at just the right time and, and somehow avoid this part of the ceiling, you'll get over into the balcony and skip all the nonsense. Might take a couple tries. There you go. So, look at this. No enemies. No helicopter. I found that like way back in 2010 or something. So here's another interesting secret that um, kind of shed, sheds light on the development process. Uh, so normally, you know, the helicopter's here, and you can fight it, or you can just keep going and, you know, break this lock and continue up. 
Um, but you can tell that they originally intended you to have to defeat the helicopter because if you go up here towards this grate and press A, it says destroy helicopter first. So this is like a leftover message from the, the beta. Um, of course, we don't have to do that. Just break the lock. So the next uh, unlockable cheat is in this room, and it's called On the Captain's Heels, which sounds kind of cool, like you're chasing a pirate over uh, the sea or something like that. What it actually means is it's literally on the captain's shoes. So once you break her lock and this opens up, you can go check out her feet. They got your American friend. Some rough looking chaps are holding her below in the depth charge bay. I'll open the door to the landing so you can get a better look. There you go. And if you check out her shoes, you'll see your next password, which unlocks the unlimited ammo cheat, which is a lot of fun. You can just hold down the fire button and it it you know, it feels like you're walking around with a minigun. Uh anything interesting I want to show here? I think uh, there was a way, oh yeah, there's something interesting that Grasslu found. So you can actually access the zip line from under here. Oh, I'm kind of stuck. <laughs> kind of glitchy. But uh, yeah, you're not supposed to do that. But it's a, uh, it's a really good solution for getting both the bond move for getting on the cable and getting the token that you have to get. Otherwise, it's almost impossible to get both. You have to stop the clone leaders from escaping. I'll secure a jet in case we have to pursue. We see helicopters on the flight deck. So you can actually snipe the pilot in this uh, helicopter and 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 beat it, destroy the helicopter just like any other, uh, but it's super, super hard to do. Whew. See, I wouldn't recommend it. Whoops. Oh no, this cutscene killed me, dude. <laughs> Alright. For real this time. But yeah, if you're doing like a super optimized um, speedrun or a TAS, you can actually snipe that helicopter by initiating the sequence earlier in the level. And then if, with just the right timing, you're able to like no scope snipe it while you're playing through the level and it skips all of this. <clears throat> but it's really hard. And realistically, it only saves a handful of seconds. All right, on to the last mission in the game, Evil Summit. And this is where our last cheat is located. I really like how the uh, background in this level upscaled. I'll flip back and forth with the mountains. You can see. So that's the old, look up top, and that's the new. Old, new. I think it looks pretty great. Anything interesting, secret-wise, out here? Yeah, there's a couple things. So... Just a moment, let me get rid of these guys. Alright, so, <laughs> first oddity, I think, is, uh... If you come over here to this edge... You know, there's like a death floor all down here. You can't really explore down below at all, but you can land on this thing <laughs> and you're safe, but then you die immediately when you uh, when you get off of it, even if you just step down on the ledge. There's also a safe spot way over there in the uh, in the uh, out of bounds kind of... Holy crap! Um, there's a safe spot you can stand on. <laughs> 
uh, like on the mountain, like down here. But it's really hard. I can't. I can't show it reliably. Reliably. <clears throat> All right. Remember, Bond, find the GA keepers before it's too late. Let's get rid of these guys first. These guys are spongy. All right, so the final hint for the cheat code to unlock uh <laughs> that, that sentence didn't make much sense. The final cheat code password is located in this room, and the hint is um, among the missile schematics. So obviously there are missile silos in this level, and if you look around, you'll find schematics for the missiles. And somewhere on this, you will find the password that unlocks the moon jump code. So that's really good in combination with uh, no clip, obviously. Oh, actually, it's not the last code. I'm sorry, we're at nine. <clears throat> there is one more. What am I doing? Should we try... Uh, let's try this. Oh, wow. It didn't kill him. Usually that'll kill both guys. Really good speedrun strat. So interesting thing about this room, you can see I rescued the world leader and everything, but there's still a henchman in here. After you kill the other three guys, this guy like spawns in this closet and, and comes out. And uh, yeah, you can just leave him in here with her and everything's fine. Kind of an oversight. This is definitely the most buggy level in the campaign, uh, which makes sense because they were probably really press for time and development. <clears throat> There's all kinds of ways you can screw yourself over in this level and do weird glitchy stuff. So yeah, the final unlockable cheat is actually not in the single-player campaign. <clears throat> so we'll go get that next after we uh, uh, save the world, I guess. <clears throat> I'll try to do the speedrun strat here. I'll try. <laughs> You're a dead man, Mr. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that was actually really good. <clears throat> A little sloppy on the uh, weapon swapping, but... You can tell they really shoehorned in Malprave's death here. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, she's still alive. We'll just let her run onto screen and disappear. <laughs> I really would have liked it if it was a, you know, double boss fight, like Malprave and Block in that first room, and maybe Malprave's like optional, like she's firing at you and you can kill her or not to progress to the next room, 
and then you know she dies in the cutscene if you didn't kill her, and she's not there in the cutscene if you did. Something like that would have been great. I'm sure they would have liked to do that if they had time. All right, we're not watching this like 15 minute long <laughs> bond move and token location hint video. So let's go get that last cheat code. So if we go to multiplayer, uh, so the cheat hint is um, beyond the castle walls, right? So the only castle in this game is castle. So if we go here, I'm going to make the bot on the same team as me so he doesn't pester me. If you go to castle and you look beyond the castle walls, somewhere out here, you will find your last cheat. And it unlocks two cheats, actually. It's the only it's the only secret that houses two cheat codes. And uh, I'll let you find out what those are yourself. But they're pretty fun. Let's see, what else do I want to show before I sign off here? Yeah, the multiplayer mode, you know, we've got completely new descriptions for everything um, that better describe the modes. And then those... Um, those default menu settings um, that you get by pressing LR and start at the uh, start at the title screen, um, those just really set the game up, as you can see, to just jump right into matches without having to alter a ton of stuff. You can still alter your weapons, whatever you want to do, you know, change whatever you want, but it's just such a good place to start. Um, whereas in the base game, it was always minutes long preparation to get into a match. Um, so yeah. That is Agent Under Fire Reloaded 1.3.2, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this guide, and I hope you have a lot of fun with probably the last release of this mod. I, there's really not anything else I want to add to it. So unless someone comes up with, like, mouse and keyboard controls, you know, you probably won't hear from me about this mod again. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day.